still in the Vikings. You saw a big trade come across last night. Everybody's checking on the Panthers. Are you okay? Michael Jackson song playing. Panthers, are you okay? Are you okay, Panthers? Panthers, are you okay? Because they got rid of Christian McCaffrey. I don't think anybody ever thought Christian McCaffrey and the Panthers and his injuries would always be together forever. I mean, we felt like this was going to be a marriage forever. Now the 49ers have to deal with it. Maybe the 49ers training staff. I mean, you look at some of the players that went there and, you know, stayed healthy and have like Trent Williams. Everybody's like, oh, Trent Williams' career is over. And now look at him. He's, he's about to, I mean, the, one, going to be one of the highest paid tackles, best tackles ever in, in football because 49ers are doing what, what he loves, which is run the ball. Now you get a running back who can catch and run with Jimmy Garoppolo who can't throw farther than 50 yards. So now you got a perfect passer to Christian McCaffrey underneath. So within this trade deadline, I think it's November 1st, so we got a few more days left. Is there something or someone you think the Vikings can trade for that makes total sense for this team? And I'm going to start with Sam in the hotel room. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, well, first of all, Christian McCaffrey going to San Francisco is the kiss of death because running backs can't stay healthy in San Francisco, and he's already injury, injury prone. So I'm not optimistic about the way that goes. Um, I look at the the available bodies on the market. Some of them are just too expensive. Like the Vikings can't absorb Robert Quinn's contract. You know, they, it would need to be somebody on a rookie deal because they have no cap space. I think True. Elijah Moore from the New York Jets is intriguing. Why? First of all, he wants out. He's disgruntled. He wants to be traded. He's in just the second year of his rookie deal. This is a, a, a early round pick by the Jets. If the Vikings acquired him, who cares if he contributes this year? You've got him for a third year. You've got him for a fourth year. You've got more team control um, beyond 2022. So I would love to have a core of Jefferson, Osborne, and then a couple flyers of Elijah Moore and Jalen Rager coming back next year with Adam Thielen. That's a nice promising receiving core. And my clock went away. Do I have time left? Anyone? I don't know. That's Matt's call. You have Matt. no time. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're out. We're going to go down to Reggie now. Reggie, trade request. So this may be unpopular, but I would not trade for anyone. I think what's interesting is um, the reason why I say that is, is because they've been largely healthy, you know, give or take. Harrison Smith going down with the concussion, Andrew Booth Jr. going down um, with his injury. I think they've been one of the healthiest starting 22s that, that we've seen in the league. And so I think if they just continue to have a little bit more continuity with one another, they'll continue to grow together. And they've played together all along anyway. Um, you know, like Luke says, just give or take a few players from last year, you know, Anthony Barr and – and uh, Harrison Phillips coming in and Jordan Hicks coming in. And you're just like, okay, like they they could sustain this. And so it's funny. So many people, I had a dude tweeting yesterday this video that I posted uh, about my brother getting shouted out by OBJ, talking about OBJ was here for a visit. It's not happening. <laughs> He'll call the man out of this video. Let's go with uh, you, Lucas Inman. Yeah, NFL's just not like the MLB where you see all these teams make all these moves at the deadline or teams that are out of contention kind of trade away the farm. c going to be the big one, but outside of that, you just don't see a lot of movement outside of, you know, a veteran player for a sixth or seventh round conditional pick. As far as the Vikes go, I think Quasi already made his moves when he brought in Ross Blacklock and Jalen Rager. It was funny. ESPN came out with like 15 possible trades they wanted to see. They had the Vikes trading Chris Boyd in a six to the Chargers for Michael Davis, their slot corner, because Chandon Sullivan, they said, had been kind of underwhelming. And uh, Michael Davis would have been an upgrade. Well, he costs like five, six mil. And like Sam said, there's just not a lot of money for the Vikings right now either. So uh, they're strapped for cash. That makes it really tough to be active. Also, like Reggie said, half these trades that you see happen is because of injuries. Vikes have been one of the healthiest teams in the league so far. And because of that, I don't think they're in a, a pressing situation to force their hand and overpay to bring somebody in. I think Kwesi and KOC are just very content with where the roster's at right now. I agree. Um, I am going to go with a tight end. 
If you think about a tight end, there's mm. some tight ends out there that they could possibly trade for. But the one that, I mean, he's looking for a trade, or not he's looking for the team, the Dolphins might try to move Mike Jacecki. Now, this is the reason why. One, he's, 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 he's getting $10 million guaranteed. So the guarantee is on the Dolphins. So in that trade, if they really just want – a piece of the puzzle to say because they're 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 receiver heavy where they're like he knows we're going to be in an 11 personnel for most of these games now we're receiver heavy this is our offense so if that's what they're doing you you put it on them you say hey you eat this 10 million in dead cap space you tell mike jacecki like look this is what we can pay you if you're willing to do this and then the dolphins have to match to make sure they continue your guarantee because that's what they guaranteed you so there's a way to get that trade for one year and see if there's lightning in a bottle because I think he'll be a free agent after this year. He signed, a, uh, he had, I think he had like a one-year deal left on his four-year deal uh, or something like that. But they can then see like if, if Mike Jacecki is 6'6", 250 is the guy, he's going to get bigger. Maybe he's the guy because they're looking for a tight end. So that's one that could happen that would not cost them a lot of money. And he already knows how to do the gritty horribly, but he knows how to do the gritty. And I saw him no. and Justin Jefferson talking after the game about it. So – uh, Luke and, that, and, that's a and, good one, and, Ron. That, that's a good one, Ron. I wonder what he would cost because remember, the Vikes don't have a fourth or a sixth round pick already going into next year. But right. a lot of times when you see these teams trying to, uh, you know, give away some of these vets, they don't ask for a lot either. You fifth, no. sixth, seventh round conditional. It could be a 2024 incentive. Yeah, that's it could true. be a 2024 pick. Because look at look at the 49ers. Yeah. They got some 2024s in there.